Now that we know the type of sections that we need to create, we can now jump into the control panel and start to work with our settings section. The first thing I want to create is the section for drinks. Remember we identified that here that we have the different drink types and I want to create a section for the drinks. So I'm going to click on settings and then go to sections. I don't have any sections yet because craft doesn't come with any defined. So we'll create new section and we'll give it a name. Now my recommendation is to always give your sections a name that is as short as possible and as descriptive as possible. When you give it a name, it'll automatically populate the handle. And as it says right here in the help text, this is how you refer to this section in the templates. If I call it, let's say coffee drinks, Craft will automatically camel case the handle to coffee drinks with a capital D. The handle can't have any spaces or anything like that, so it's going to camel case it. But I'm just going to go with drinks because I think that's nice and simple. It's a coffee site, so I think coffee is already implied. I do have the option of enabling versioning for the section entries, and I'm going to go ahead and leave that checked. So for the section type, if you remember for the different pieces of craft, we talked about the fact that there are singles, channels, and structures and that I'm going to choose the channel section for the drinks. And that's because I don't need to have a hierarchy here. I don't need the structure to have a hierarchy. And a single is just for a single page. I don't need that. So what I need is a channel, which is a collection of related entries without any hierarchy at all. For the site settings, this is, if I had multiple sites, I would have them listed here. I need to define the entry URI format. So if you think about craftycoffee.test here, and if I go to slash drink slash espresso, I'm gonna define what my URI is gonna look like. So by default, it populates it with the handle, and then this placeholder or variable here for slug. Now the slug is basically the short hyphenated name of the entry. So if it's espresso, the slug would be all lowercase espresso. If it's mocha coffee, the slug would be mocha dash coffee. So when I go to the URL craftycoffee.test slash drink slash espresso, I'll get the espresso entry in the drink section. And now I have to define the template that I want to use for this. So what I like to do is create a template group or a template folder that matches the section. And then the common naming convention is to use underscore entry for an entry template. And the reason we use underscore is because that makes this a hidden template so it cannot be accessed directly. If we just did this, someone could go to drink slash entry and that would actually show a broken template that would probably give an error because there wouldn't be a entry associated with that slug. So underscore entry. We can put dot twig there if we want, but we'll just leave it off because craft knows that it works. If you need some help, you can click the help text. For preview targets, this allows us to use the live preview. We're going to be fine here. We're just going to use the default information. So let's save that. And we have our first section created. Now I'm going to go over into my code and under the templates directory, I'm going to create a new directory called drinks. Cause remember I just referred to it and inside of there, I'm going to create a new template called underscore entry dot twig. Now this video is not about doing templates. We have quite a bit of configuration to do before we get to templates. But what I like to do is as I create the sections and define the template, I'm going to come over here and just create a blank template so I don't forget. And it makes it easier than from having to go back later and look and oh, what did I name that template or what did I say that template should be called? I'm just going to do it now so it's all here for me. So we have our drinks section here. Over here to the right, you'll see this thing called entry types. Entry types are the different types of entries in a section. And this makes craft really flexible because I could have different drink types. Let's say I needed to treat 
the drinks differently. Maybe they have different fields and they have a different visual treatment on the front end. I could actually create different entry types for those drinks. Every section has a default entry type, which is named after the section itself. If you want to add additional entry types, you click on entry types and you can add one here and you give it a name, a handle, the name of the title field, and then you can design the field layout for that. So if you find that you have things that all need to be in the same section, but might have different fields, let's say you have articles and you have different types of articles and you would like them all to be in an article section, but still have different fields for the different type. That's where entry types would come in. So back in our drink section, we'll go back here to sections we have that created. Now we're ready to create the fields for the drink section. We access the fields via settings, fields, and the fields can be organized into groups. You can see we have a new group here and I can call this drinks. You don't have to do this, but it is a nice way to organize similar fields together so they're easier to find. And you can see that Craft even creates a common group. This is for common fields that are reused across different field layouts and different sections. This is really nice because you might want to have some generic fields like body, excerpt, image, things like that. You don't have to create one for every section. You can have a set of common fields and use them across different field layouts in different sections. So I like to organize my fields by section, just like I did my uh, templates where I created that template folder. And that's just my choice and it's, it's my preference for how to work, but, and you can do whatever you want. Um, you can also organize by field type too, if you want to do that. The, the main takeaway you should have is that you should do what makes sense for your project and your working style. Craft is flexible enough to support any approach for organizing fields. After we are done creating our fields, we'll organize those into the entry type as field layouts. But first, let's create the fields for drinks. So I created a new group called drinks, and I'm going to create a new field right up here. Now, the first thing I know that I need to create for drinks, because if I go here and click on a drink, is the name of the drink. Now, fortunately, Craft gives us a title field for every single entry automatically, so we don't have to create the name. We'll just reuse that. What I can do, however, is go back into my section, into my entry type, and here it says title field label. I'm going to change this to drink name. And this is just for the label. So it makes more sense contextually when somebody's creating a drink. So now if I go to entries and do a new drinks entry, you can see the title field is now called drink name. Makes way more sense than title because drinks don't really have titles. They have names. So back into settings and then fields and I'm in my drinks field group. I'm going to now create a new field for the introduction. So we'll call this introduction. This is a short sentence here, right there in italics. So we'll call that introduction. We'll say short sentence at top of drink page. And if we want to use the fields value as search keywords, sure, that's fine and the field type. Now craft comes with all sorts of different field types automatically. We have everything from assets, categories, all the way down to entries where you can relate entries to each other, to plain text and so forth. If you want a, if you want a rich text field, like a WYSIWYG editor, you will need to install one from the plugin store. There is the redactor, plugin from Pixel and Tonic who make craft that you can install as well. For now, we'll just use plain text. We can put up some placeholder text that shows in the field. If it doesn't have a value, we can limit the number of characters or bytes, whether it uses a monospace font allows line breaks. For this one, I know by looking here that I just want this to be a single sentence. I'm going to style it myself with the code. So I'm going to make it plain text and not allow line breaks because I'm going to use the settings to control what the content editors can put in. 
So let's click save. Now I have two fields. I have my title field I get automatically and an introduction field. There are a few other fields that we didn't create like drink style, which is here. And of course the background image. The next one I want to create is the page copy. And this is for this area right here. So I kind of want this to be a rich text field so I can include some uh, different stuff. So let's go ahead and go to our plugin store. And I'm going to search for Redactor, which is a first party plugin from Pixel and Tonic and click install. Now it's going to use Composer behind the scenes to install this plugin. And that is two parts. That means it will require it as a dependency via Composer and then run the database migrations to actually enable it and install it in my system so I can access it. All right, so it's all done. And now if I go back to my settings and then go to fields, go to my drinks group, add a new field. This one's going to be called page copy. And for field type, I'm going to choose redactor. And redactor allows me to have some configs. I'm going to use the, let's say, standard and then click save. So now I have two fields, introduction and page copy. So there are a few other fields that we didn't create, like drink style, background image, and a button, which we have down here linking to the recipe for the drink. We'll handle those fields a bit later, so let's hang tight on those. The next section is the news section. So if we go back to settings, gonna go to sections and create a new section for news. So remember this one is, if we go back to the home page on our static site, it's for these news articles. There's a title and then you click through and you get the news itself, which is just some text. So news, news, it's gonna be a real simple name. We'll have versioning. This is also going to be a channel. It's a collection of entries that are related because they're news articles, but they don't need a hierarchy. And then news, and then the slug will be fine. And for the template, we'll do news and then underscore entry. Just like before, I'm going to create that template directory. So we'll call this news, and then inside of there, create a new file, underscore entry.twig. So it's a hidden template, so you can't access it directly. And even though I already have an entry.twig, because they're in different directories, I can name all of the entry templates the same thing. And in fact, that's a preferred way to work because then everyone knows when they're working on the project, if I need to get to the single entry view of a entry or need to get to that template, I know what it's called and it's easy to find. I don't have to do any guessing. So back here, I got that created. We're going to leave everything else as it is for the preview and click save. Now again, going back to my settings for fields, I'm going to create a new group called news. And in here, I need to create a field. If I look at my site, I have this summary or lead here and a title a byline and the copy. This up here spilling the beans and this, this is the name of the new section and a, a little tagline. That's gonna be for now hard coded into the template. This is dynamic, I need to create this. The headline or article title I get for free with craft. I think this, I'm going to use the actual user that created the entry and then this will be a field. So I need to create this field and this field. So coming in here, I'm going to create that excerpt field first. So we'll call it news excerpt. And this one will be plain text. And just like it is, we can save it. So I want to keep these configurations as simple as possible. And in fact, what I could do is take this and let's actually refactor this into just excerpt and drop it into common and save it. And the reason I'm doing that because I can probably reuse this other places down the road and I don't have a special news excerpt field. Now, if that news excerpt field needed to do certain things that were particular or specific to news, I would want to create a specific field. So the next one is this news body here. And I'm going to do that by going into news, new field. We'll call this news body. It's going to be a redactor. 
We'll use the default config and save. Now I could make the case that this news body field could be genericized to just be body and dropped into common. But I'm thinking maybe down the road I might wanna have specific items that are just for news. Like maybe I wanna be able to pull in images and have it only pull from a special assets volume that's just news. So we'll leave this as part of the news group for now. 